Hi, Phil. Hey, Dan. What's up? <clears throat> Not much. Hey, were you able to download um, everything that you were sent? I noticed there's one thing that I came from uh, <clears throat> from Sherry about a week ago that I can't print. It's a, I, I think it's an Acrobat file, but it should work. Okay, you know let's what? see. I was looking for the email that had some attachments sent to it, like letters from, but I can't find it and I never, oh. opened, I never tried to open it. Okay, let me just see. I think I know which one you're talking about and I can if tell that's you. That's the one. If you I want can... to forward that one to me, I, 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 so I didn't read uh, any of the letters yet. Okay. Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. Just a second. Yeah, that's okay. I got to do something with this uh, Zoom for a second, anyways. Okay. That's not it. Oops. Shoot. Hey, Frank. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, great. Here we go. Uh, Oh, wait a minute. I, I found it. I found it. Got it? it. it okay. Came, Frank, it came from another email, not the capital planning email. I found yeah, it. it. Yeah, there's a, is that the one? There's a PDF in that one, capital project request for the school. One, two, three. Yeah, there's that. And then I'm sending you another one that's got one, two, three, four, five, six attachments. No, you know what? They might be counts. They're from Sherry. They're probably different types of calendar invites, but send it to me. I'll take a look at it. Okay. Uh, okay, that's on its way. Oh, uh, there's a problem sending the message. Please try again. What? You got my Philip dot Renzi. Philip dot Renzi. I'll have to I'll take out your at Gmail. Oh, come on. It's not letting me do it. What's the date of the email? Uh the 28th of February. It's your philip.renzi at gmail.com, right? Yep. Okay, go. All right, that's gone. And uh, it's got a lot of stuff on it. Let me see. There's another one. I bet you the calendar invites. Let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, I don't yeah, that's from no. Frank. Yeah, yeah, that's I got that one. Oh, wait a yeah. minute. You have a lot more attachments than I did, I think, for some reason. Mm. Okay, well, there's there's several of them. So there's another one here. Capital request, Frank Dardone. Capital planning meeting tonight. That's the invite. Okay. Inbox. No, I think that's it. 
The yeah. one I the one I cannot get is one from Sherry. Uh, it's it's it arrived. It's just that I I can't open it with Acrobat. Yeah, no, it's probably a calendar invite if it came from her. Is that what I'm going to guess? I don't think you're missing anything. Okay, good. <clears throat> Hey, Frank, is that you taking those pictures for the item? Yes. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. They're pretty nice. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I like the, that's, uh, I'm a call for paper 28 hours a week. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Do you work for the item? Mm, Part-time. What do you think of the new uh, editor? Well, I suppose I don't want to put you on the spot here, but yeah, uh, I, I think he, Bob's been there for ages, hasn't he? Yeah, he's been and gone. He came. He came back from elsewhere. Yeah, I didn't know that. I it's know that Dolbear pleasant place to work. Yeah, Glenn, Glenn Dolbear has done this for a long time. His family. Yeah, he just been, retired. Yeah, his family basically owned it for I generations. Think, yeah, I think the family still owns it. Do they? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to bet on it, but I'm not yeah. sure. I know these little, these, these hometown papers are a fragile thing. You don't like to see too oh, much. Oh, tell me about it. Too it's much. Sad. Yeah. Frank, Frank, we ready to rock? Uh, we got five of us, and I know David's not coming. Joe will be on in a minute as well. He's uh, having computer troubles. Oh, Conway. Yep. Um, yeah. What time is it? Seven. I guess seven oh two. You are you? Oh, did you start recording yet, Phil? Yeah, it it, it starts recording. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're good with that. All right. I'll call the your uh, meeting to order at seven oh three. Like I said, we got a couple of guests tonight, so uh, we'll try to get. Get through them so we're not waiting on too long. I don't think it's going to be. Um, I don't think it's going to be too bad. Um, I see Tom and Tom and Todd. I see out there. I can make my screen bigger. And Catherine. Oh. Oh yeah, I see Catherine now. Okay, hi. I see. Every, I like to see everybody. And there's one, two, three, four. There's five of us, so we can go. Um, Tom, are you going to be kind of quick with yours? I'll be quick, Frank. Yeah, absolutely. It's not a lot of items. You get you. We'll let, you uh, we'll let you go first, unless no one else, unless uh, someone else has a problem with that. Go, go ahead, buddy. All right, you ready for me? Can you hear me? All right. Yep. Sounds okay. good. All right. So we're looking for um, three items, basically. Fourteen thousand for the replacement of twelve gear lockers to store firefighter gear at the Greenwood Station at Five Oak Street. Uh, they're antiquated. <clears throat> um, Twenty-five plus years old. No space. Um, so we've got multiple quotes and, you know, we need to get those at this time. Um, 23,000 for the purchase of 55 high vis jackets to be worn by department members, uh, during non-fire responses. And of course the, uh, <clears throat> purchase of a new fire pumper and I'll answer any questions uh, pertaining to any of those three items that you might have. Tom, right off the bat, the, the 55 high vis jackets, does that yep. give every um, firefighter their own jacket or are those shared? No, Frank, those are uh, individual. Everybody gets okay. their own. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Tom, on the, uh, the, pump, uh, the pumper, uh, is this replacing another uh, vehicle or is this an addition to what's, what's already there? It looks like you've got one already. The Seagrave. Yeah, we've got four. Um, you got four, okay. Yeah, this is replacing the 2000 Seagrave, uh, which is 23 years old. Yeah. The reserve pump. But we have we have two frontline pumps and a ladder truck, and two reserve pumps, and the reserve pumps are extremely important. For instance, this week, both my frontline pumps are down. 
and they're both in service though. Second line pumps are in service uh, currently as frontline pumps. Um, okay. Yeah, it's, it's seen its, uh, its day and we poured honestly uh, a lot of money into that piece this year. Sure. Uh, we're gonna have to get a couple more years, two and a half more years out of it. And that would be if we ordered it today. Right. Two and a half years out on an order. It used to be a year, it went to 18 months, it's two and a half years. Um, and I realized they are awfully expensive. Is there a trade-in value on the old Seagrave or you keep, or will you keep that? Um, well, we'd be removing one of them and, and one of the front line would go into a uh, reserve. So we try to rotate them. So we would, with the deal of this, very little trade in. Um, we've been asked this question before. A lot of times we'll give it to another city, uh, a bigger city. I think our last one went to Malden, um, you know, three or four grand, if that, you know, um, yeah. but if you go out on the open market, you can see values as high as 20 or 30 grand. Um, but we're always instructed not to do that. Uh, and I, I don't really know the reason why. We've never done that. In the 27 years I've been there. No, it, it may be a lot of wedding at one point, and occasionally we had to borrow it back. You yeah. Know? Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, hey, Tom, it's Phil. Uh, are these jackets, high-vis jackets, replacing current ones? Um, no, you know what? I'll give you a little background on these. It's kind of strange. So the bunker gear or the turnout gear that we wear now, the heavy stuff, uh, come to find out that it uses the polyvinyls to protect you from oil and water. And it's cancer-causing, um, if you can believe that. And I'm gonna read you something real quick from the International Association of Firefighters and the Metropolitan Fire Chiefs Association. who released a joint statement last year on the, the synthetic chemicals in their protective gear that are associated with health risks, including liver and kidney cancer. And I really don't wanna read this, but I'm going to because it's somewhat alarming. Um, first, I'll preface with the fact that nobody has come to market yet with anything that doesn't have these chemicals. So we have to wear the stuff, but we wanna be in it as, you know, the least amount that we have to be. So they're fluorinated compounds that, that protect you from the oil, they repel water. And uh, the IAF and Metro Chief Joint Statement advises firefighters to reduce their exposure to PFAS by only using protective gear when absolutely necessary. It also emphasizes that wearing all personal protective equipment and self-contained breathing apparatus during firefighter operations working in smoke-filled environments is still the best first line of defense for limiting exposures to fire ground contaminants. Uh, even the EPA has increased regulations limiting the permissible use of these PFASs. So it's gonna come real quick. And the new gear that we get is gonna be swapped out and that's, that's about 3,500 per set. So a lot of the departments are going through these lightweight coats. They're high vis, they're, they're beautiful coats labeled radio pockets, et cetera. Uh, Everett just got them, you know, um, we do about 3000 medicals out of our 4,500 runs and a lot of other calls. So the guys would be, and the gals would be wearing them to about 76% of our calls. And they're lighter, you know, fatigue issue goes away, they're breathable. Um, you've seen the coast film, the construction industry, it's just a heavier duty version, but it's very similar, you know, so. This isn't one of those things where we want to just get them to look good. And I actually did file for a grant, uh, you know, but we don't know if we're going to get that grant. And I'm going to be honest with you, these coats are, uh, it's, 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 it's something we need to get these guys in. You know? Okay. Uh, it's on the storage lockers. Is that replacing all of them or is there is there a partial replacement? No, Frank, we're in Greenwood, so we got four shifts, three on engine two times four, that's 12. So okay. all of them in Greenwood at the Greenwood station. Yeah, we have all, you know, since uh, 2004 up at headquarters, they're fine. Um, you know, lockers last a long time. These, these are like the lockers, Frank, we used to use at the junior high and the old Galvin school. They don't even fit the gear, the existing yeah. ones. It's, uh, you know, it doesn't protect the gear. It doesn't, yeah, it's, it's time. 
Perfect. Uh, anyone else? Obviously, the 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 engine's probably going to go to a warrant article. That wouldn't be something that would go through our committee. So yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's a big that's a big nut. Yeah, uh, understood. That's that's fine. It still comes out of cap, yeah, it's still a capital item, but as far as this committee's concerned, it's all a little bit over our heads. Mm -hmm. um, all right. If nobody else has anything specific uh, regarding the uh, walkers or the jackets, all right. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate that. Appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Right, take care. Any discussion before we move on to the next pre presentation? I, I, I fully support the fire department, but I'm going to okay. ask if jackets are a capital expense. And yeah. maybe that, and, and it is uniform, but it's a high performing, they're expensive. The cost, I, I feel like the limit of it makes it a capital expense. And so um, it, it's obviously needed, like based on what he says, and it's a considerable expense. So oh, hopefully, uh, I think we should approve it, but I'm on the fence on whether or not <laughs> what it is, uh, but I think it's obviously needed. Gotcha. And yeah, the pumper, I think we talked, it, it, that's yeah. definitely going to be an article. It's going right? to be a warrant article. Yeah, it's like half yeah. our budget. I mean, the, the, the carcinogenic stuff in those existing <clears throat> jackets, I mean, that's a national issue. Yeah. Um, in the so, lockers yeah the greenwood's such an old station so I, I think that's good to know where those lockers are going there well i'm I'm talking more about the jackets oh the jackets too yeah i'm sorry yep um so i i mean what, what what's the the lifespan of these jackets i mean do you i mean do you have to get a new one every time a new uh person comes on the firefighting force or i think tom left frank yeah, I know. I'm, I'm sorry, Joe. That's probably a local. That would probably be operational if they had a new officer. Am I assuming? Am I guessing? Yeah, I, I would imagine that that would become an operating expense at that time. Yeah, I think over over time. I, I don't want to speak for the deputy chief, but this is one of those. As time goes on, they can kind of add it in to their operating every year, and it eventually becomes you know, just part of, similar to like the Chromebooks, the way that was handled before, to throw an yeah. example. As long as they, yeah, as long as they're okay with that and understand that, and I'm sure it'll be fine with the town. All right, uh, we can always discuss further uh, into the future. Let's, um, unless, uh, uh, Todd, can you, uh, can we talk to Catherine first? Yeah, absolutely. All right, thank you very much. All right, Catherine, nice to see you. Hi, the floor nice is yours. You. Um, I looked back at some of your earlier meetings, and I think the question of the year is what is capital? Um, and and I would like to know just as much as you would like to know so that I can start building things into the budget. Um, I think the I've been with the library for 23 years. So the history for me is that a lot of things when the building was done over, a lot of things went into capital, and one of those things was IT. All of the IT was a capital item. And when we look at where IT has gone, um, maybe it isn't capital anymore. We're down to about um, 10 or 12,000 on average a year for that. So I know at one time the, the 10,000 was sort of a limit. You didn't wanna be spending below that. Um, when we look at the kinds of IT that we have, some of it is the catalog and the circulation system, which is sort of um, like operational infrastructure. And then you look at things that are, um, you know, more like what you have in an office. Um, and then the third component is all uh, for patron use. So, you know, if, if you eventually want to write that all out, or if you think some of it is capital, I'd be happy to talk more about that, or you could talk with Todd about it too. We do have our own server. It's a smaller one. We're, we're part of Noble, which is north of Boston Library Exchange. So we're not all through the town. Most of it, what we have is not through the town. Um, 
Todd does our telephone systems and there are some things we're connected with, but we do have a sort of this separate infrastructure that goes with the other libraries in the state. Um, you know, we had painting that was capital and we've taken that out. Over the years, we've taken quite a bit out. If you, if you are looking to reduce the library to things like roofing and masonry, um, which are clearly expensive capital items, I, you know, over time I can do that and, and I can look to write those things into the library budget. For next year, now last year, there were a couple of things you did not um, fund and other things that you did. And I have a relatively small budget. So that like most, like most, uh, the most budgets are personnel. So what I have left, $10,000 is significant for, I've probably only got 30,000 for, um, you know, for stuff that's not books. So when you don't fund something, that's, that can be significant. Um, aside from that, as I said, it is relatively easy for me to build that into the budget. So I, I would do that. So well, I, I can answer specific questions, but if you, if you are looking to, you know, move us out of, Kathy, let, me, uh, let me try to answer without, you know, not specific to the library. Um, over the years, you know, the capital was used for the schools to do a lot of IT with servers, Chromebooks and that. And it was discussed, not with just us, of, you know, with, uh, with, with Rick Stinson and with Steve Mayo, that look, we can give you the big lump sum now because it's a big cost item at this time. But you, that is something you're going to need for replacements to work into your budget. Um, every department, and, and Todd could probably speak to that as well. Um, it's not a case of with of us as a committee throwing it back at you. I think it's just something that um, is just it, it, the evolution of it. And Joe, if I'm speaking, if I'm saying it incorrectly, let me know. But you should. It's all coming from the the big pot of our tax dollars. It's just is it coming from? Is it just making your your budget a little bit larger? Or is it coming from capital? Uh, it's not a case of, you know, well, we don't think you should have them at all. It's just, right. th there, is, there is a limit of where um, we should draw a line on capital. You know, if you need to replace one of your, your office chairs, that, that shouldn't be a cop, uh, capital expense. That should be an operational expense. You know, the painting has always gone back and forth. The carpets, we've always been good. We, we think if anything, I like the lockers for the fire department or carpet in the library, those are hard items. and those need to those need to be funded by us, especially if they're a big dollar item. But I, I, I speaking from the last ten years of what I've seen um, evolve, that is something you know. If you need a, a printer or a computer, you know, if you're replacing your whole server, which obviously is now run by the town, the town takes care of that. Um, that's something different. But the small items, I think, it's a consensus that we're kind of hoping that they would be taken by each individual department's budget. Mm -hmm. What is the industry? Frank, 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 if I may say, uh, generally yeah. speaking, a capital expense is like a major expenditure that extends the useful life of an asset, right? Like that's the basic, no, I'm a, not a CPA, but that's, you know, the basic definition. And, and then there's, we've discussed here about setting like a limit, like a money limit that would sort of meet certain requirements, but it also has to extend the life of an asset. And so that. To the point about IT and technology, which has become, you know, I think of David here, he makes a a, a very uh, valid point when this comes up, is that technology over the years, it's become almost disposable. Like these Chromebooks are so cheap. And as soon as you get them, a new one comes out that's cheaper. And then it's not as much of a capital expense as it used to be 20 years ago. And so we've shied away from some of the smaller apps on the IT side. But yes, like last year, the carpets, this year you have a roof, like those large capital you know, expenditures are definitely going to be the bread and butter for your library with your budget, right? Like those are the things that, you know, we need to maintain your asset. It's a beautiful building and make sure that it's being properly, you know, maintained and repaired as necessary. And then in the realm of all the other, you know, $7 million of other ass in town, we're, we're juggling all the balls of 
of the, those questions with everyone's departments. And so we really try to uh, discuss all these asks. So, so this year, uh, my understanding it's IT and a roof, right? Is that what's on the list for the library? Yes. Okay, and, and the roof, the number looks great compared to the original number, folks. Yeah. I saw that from the last meeting. The number came in really favorable. Yeah, Phil, that, that number is solid too. That's, that's awesome. And that's the whole solid. roof. Yes. Yep. And he, it's, okay. And did, was there a warranty on that? Was that a question I think someone asked at the last meeting? Yeah, so we get one year uh, via contract for workmanship. And then through Firestone, it's a 20 year. A 20 year manufacturer. Yep. yep. And then uh, we mentioned solar on that. So as long as we have the Firestone rep come out and give us guidance on how to install the solar on those, uh, it will not void the warranty. We just have to we just have to perform to their specification. Yeah. So so my only question back to Catherine is in this year's acts and the IT, can you uh I'm not an IT person. So this is just basic equipment for your main systems or what 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 what's on your list for the IT this year? Uh it's mainly staff computers and um, server backups. It's about 12,000 worth and the, and the bulk of it is staff computers. There's a couple of public things. Oh yeah, 11 computers, I got it. Okay. Now, let me ask, does that replace everybody's, every one of the staff members computers, 11? No, no, it's on a, um, it's on a five year rotating um rotating plan so i don't know if if todd will will want to chime in and he'll see it differently i'm i'm more than happy to work this into the it into the library budget it would be easier for todd it would be easier for us um, we have reduced a lot of of the it stuff um but we still do have like ten thousand or or so um, and and I see the request that you get. So uh, the trustees would not be happy for, to hear me say this, but to be absolutely honest, I I can find funding for this this year. Um, it means that I have I have a gift fund that I could use. It means that that ten thousand dollars won't go to something else. Um, but if you are really in a bind, I can cover that IT and I can work with the town council to get it into the budget moving forward. Um, if the trade-off is you'll give me a roof, I will gladly, yeah. <laughs> gladly. Um, because the thing about the roof is if we, we, ha we get water um, and, and we've done a, a good job of you know, keeping it at bay, but if that gets into the old building ceiling, that's gonna be a mess to fix it. It's not gonna be an easy fix. So I really, it, that that front part, I wanna protect as much as I can. Yeah, that, that's, that's clearly, uh, you know, something that I think most of us would agree. Um, that is a capital expense and it would extend the life of the asset. <laughs> right. I think there were some computers on there last year, Catherine, uh, and that we didn't fund. What did you end up doing with that? Or is this sort of a carryover from that? Um, what happened last year is that the computers that were not funded were public computers. And there was a change at the state level. And I was able to consider those public computers um, materials like public materials. So they fell into the category of books. So I was able to use the book budget to fund those and still meet all the certification requirements I needed to be certified. That's probably more confusing than you needed to know, but I was, I was able to do it and, it and it worked out in a really good way because of what you didn't fund. And the server was a big thing. If if we had not got the server, that would have been difficult. But you had funded that, so we 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 covered it. And the network printer. This is obviously the one you're asking about this year. Is it different than the one we funded last year? Yeah, the printers are all for the public. 
Um, the staff is really cutting back on printing. We have we have one copier that we use, and we get that through Todd. Um, but the printers are for the public. Is that for use, or is there a charge for using them? We it's ten cents a page or something. Yeah, that we have a suggested donation, so you actually can print for free. We on, a, on a code. We, yes, we reserve the right to limit you, but you can print for free and we have a suggested donation. And I tell any library that will listen, by doing that, we actually raise more money than if people paid. We have we get donations all the time. People are so grateful to not have to pay to print mm -hmm. that, that they will. Um, so that's been a nice, and that money goes back into printer paper and printing. Right, anybody have any IT related questions for the library while we still have both Catherine and Todd on the line specifically for the library? I would just like to say, since I've been on the board, Frank, uh, I find every year the library out of all the departments comes in the most uh, prepared with backup and information to their requests. And I really appreciate that being a member of this committee. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. We research for a living. <laughs> thank you all right Jeff, thank you very much for uh Abby, thank for you joining us thank you very much all right have a good night all right we can um we can go to todd and we can obviously incorporate some of the discussion of that it request with todd but after he presents so um or is, are you here just to support Todd for, for those items? Are you here for any, anything specific? Any other spe specific items? No, we don't have any any requests yeah. this year. Do you have anything coming up, Todd? Like, do you have anything big coming up in the next couple of years, do you think, that, that we could start? Like, not so we, there's not a big lump coming up or, or anything in that regards? Nothing. It's it's going to be hitting operating this, this year. Okay, cool. Awesome. If I um, what did we want to ask him last last meeting? We had a question. Hold on. Um, cloud cloud security. Oh, yeah, that, what, yeah something like that. Who, what is um, what is the right? town doing to, to prevent ransomware? We could go into closed session if you want, like executive session, if you want to get into what we're doing for security. Um, <laughs> That's true. I think it could speak in generalities, but uh, so if you could say something's being, I mean, this stuff is happening uh, more often than people would like to admit. I think a, a union was hit by it recently, um, and I only suspect that it's going to get worse. If we do have controls in place, um, scanners in place, and we do end user training. Okay. Um, so it was Frank, was your question last meeting related to like if whether or not we could be funding or assisting the town and to make it better if needed? Was that why you were asking that? I was asking that because it seems to me that that's the kind of IT um, uh, that 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 meets the test of a capital expenditure to me. Um, yeah, something new like that. If if we needed funding for that, we would probably come to capital. A lot of controls are built into these online subscriptions that you get, like Office 365. Um, there are also a lot of state programs out there that give you grants that have programs that we, we've been using too. Okay. You've muted, Frank. You're muted. Is that? Yeah. All right. Uh, do we want to ask Todd any specific questions about the library items? I mean, Todd, can do you think it's going to be an issue for her to put these in her budget like we did with the schools over the years for the Chromebooks, say, as an example? Yeah, I think it only makes sense. I mean, if you have a definitive five-year cycle on your PCs, it's not like a new project. Right. And it's like Phil said, I mean, you're not extending the life of that. You're just replacing it. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, I just think the big thing with that is that sh she understands and that, you know, we just didn't all of a sudden surprise her, like maybe last year, maybe we did last year surprise her, but um, she seems completely on top of it and knows that. Oh yeah, she sounds like she gets it. Yeah. Um, all right, I, I don't think there was any other uh, IT things on the list. Oh, that it seems pretty straightforward. Yeah. It must have been something you've done over the years, Todd, because before you came, it wasn't this easy. It was tough. Yeah. Hundred percent. It was a long road. But, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Anyone else for, for anything for Todd before we let him go? No, thank you very much. Thank right. you. Thanks, Todd. Yeah, hey, I'll have a good night. Thank you. you too. Todd. All right. Take care. All right. Three down. That's pretty good. Um, while we're talking about the, I mean, we might as well just go right for the, uh, the, the library's request. So obviously she understands it now. Um, she seems like she, they could handle the entire amount with other funds. I would be open to see where we are at the end. And if we could just, she understands that this is it. Maybe if we had to slip something in, but for now I could just say, I would recommend we, we kind of table everything until we see where we are at the end. Unless somebody has something yeah. that- how, how are we generally feeling about the, the roof replacement? Um, not that it, we want to take a vote on it today, but is that generally uh, a reasonable request at this stage? She's talking about uh, preventing flood damage and that sort of thing. I think it is. I mean, it's quite obvious that, I mean, the, the, the roof seems to be older and uh, she says it's the potential for leaks are, are high. Yeah. So yeah. I wouldn't have a problem uh, funding it unless, you know, the wrinkle is the solar equipment. Um, I don't know, Joe, if you can answer it, but you know, it's an old roof, you know, say they do put solar panels on it. What, what does that, what are the implications of that? So um, as long as we reach out to the manufacturer's rep and they'll basically give us a, a punch list, right? For lack of a better term um, on exactly how to mount that to not void the warranty, uh, then it's a non-issue. What their so that that's a building that my group doesn't. I have some interaction. Um, you know, if if they need help with the roof or something like that, uh, all of our you know trades contracts are set up so that anybody in town can use anybody that we have on uh, for that purpose. So my buildings group uh, and her maintenance guy Dave uh, end up talking a lot back and forth. They actually all walk the roof together when they're up there estimating the price for it. Um, I don't know if solar is in the long-term plan for her for that. So I'd be hesitant to kind of say anything on that. I know anything that I'm looking for is just directly targeted at the biggest energy consumers in town. So um, if I thought for one reason personally that doing solar is going to compromise an issue with the roof underneath it, that to me, it's not worth it. So I probably wouldn't bring that forward unless I was reasonably confident that I wouldn't have any issues. Is, well, is, well, I, think, is, I, I think there is an appetite for installing solar panels everywhere, whether it's a wise move or not. So I would, I would think that we would talk about it somewhat. It, it, we would need a structural engineer to tell the town if the structure could handle and what, what it could handle, right? Isn't these old buildings, isn't that a huge consideration? Besides uh, facing south, right? Like there's the obvious is does it face due south? Because that's the first question they're going to ask. And then the second is, you know, what kind of array and the weight of it? Um, and, you know, re-roof during a re-roof, you can tie it into the structure. You could spread out the weight a lot more. It's more, that's the time to put a solar array on is if you're stripping the roof. Is this a roof? Is this stripping the roof down or is this an, a roof on top of a roof, Joe? By uh, the way. Um, I'd have to look at the quote. and. Um, at my house right now, I don't have it in front of me. Okay. I believe it's completely removing the rubber membrane 
uh, and replacing it with any ancillary insulation uh, that might need to be replaced that could be accessed. So it should yeah. it should be one for one. I I don't think they would fancy just throwing another roof on top of it. Probably be no. complicated with the penetrations and and all that to get it to stay tight. Yeah, you're going to need to add insulation anyways, either way, right? Because of energy. Right. Um, are we under stretch energy now? Is that enacted in Wakefield, or when does that start? We we are a green community, so. Yeah. So who who takes if we wanted to explore solar? Is that the town would have to do the feasibility of that, or is that like some other entity like the light department that would have to do that for the library? Um, it could be both. So I. I can only speak from my experience. Um, I've had great luck twice getting two different units that piggybacked a strip and replace, just like you just said. Um, and both of them, we didn't have to pay for. So it, it was kind of a no lose. Um, outside of that, like I know for the Civic Center, um, I reached out to the vendor that we'd used before. Uh, we kind of walked through some of it. Um, then I asked some questions to the light department and whatnot, but they've been more than willing to help us with anything we need related to that. But I'd say that that probably has to be kickstarted by somebody on the town side to get that ball rolling. But I know if memory serves me correctly, they're looking to see if they could get onto some big roofs in town too, right? Because whatever doesn't get consumed, you know, does benefit them because it goes back into the grid too. Um, so I, I think we're just kind of scratching the surface at this and that yep. this is something that is probably going to morph into, you know, a bigger, more prominent thing in the future as we go on. Yeah. just, we don't have like, so the timing of this with active leaks in the building and the fact that they have books, you know, like we probably, as soon as this is approved, do you think that this project would be performed uh, later this year? This project, as soon as we get the funding, they could probably start doing this in July. As soon um, as the fiscal year starts, yeah. Yeah, or maybe even, I don't know the total length of time that it would take them to replace that. They might even start it a little bit, uh, maybe a week or so ahead, um, depending on how it lines up with the holiday. But this would be something that um, I would imagine wouldn't be done any later than September, the latest. Would this require closing the library? I don't believe so. Nope. It might require um, some of the parking out back, depending on where they need to land the dumpster to remove the original roof. Um, so they might have some jockeying around, but it shouldn't, uh, any of the other buildings that we've done, we, we haven't had to close. I, I thought this would be in, in the front. What, what is the roof to be replaced? Is it in the front? The whole, it's the whole roof, isn't it? Both the, the new thing. and the old section? Yep. New and old. Yeah. Yep. Sounds like a pretty low price for that, but that's good. I, I mean, I'm puzzled by that. Well, so one of the things I mentioned earlier, too, we have so many quotes out there for roof work too. We've kind of picked up um, an economy oh, of scale, an economy of scale volume, with that. Yeah, volume yeah. discounts. Yeah, good. So, so is the price subject to change if we don't approve them all? No, no, that's yeah. they're yeah. they're all quoted um, per building and. We're transparent with that. We ask for, you know, their best price for it. And if it gets approved, awesome. Uh, if it doesn't get approved, you know, it, it's a requirement of all of our contracts anyway. Uh, if we ask you, you have a certain amount of time to give us a quote and there's a non-guarantee to it. There's your roof, roof. Joe. There's your roof, Joe. There's a yeah. solar map of it. Um, a there's a lot of penetration. So you got skylights. So the roof is not dealing with skylights or anything else, cladding of anything, right? It's strictly the membrane. It's it's all this whole. Yeah, they would. Thing. They wouldn't. Uh, they wouldn't replace the skylights. They'd reflash everything yep. though while they're up there. Gigantic. Um, you know, depending. Like I know on the Civic Center, we replaced the roof there. We had debated on whether or not to remove the skylights. Uh, ultimately, it was decided to keep them for the historic appearance of the building. Uh, so what we ended up doing was replacing the window panes and everything that we could, reflashing it around it, and then doing the roof afterwards. I assume the leaks have stopped. Uh, to this point, there have been none.
I would hope so. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but I, I have to ask, I can't, as a property manager, I always have to ask those leading questions after repairing leaks as, as you need to know, but no. Yeah. Joe, are there any other fun funding options for the roof at the library like we had for the Civic Center that we could partially fund it and make up for somewhere else? Uh, maybe. It would require either myself or Mr. Mayo. Typically, when we, when we ask for like a budgetary earmark or something like that, we would write a letter into the delegation, and they would include that as like a rider uh, in the budget bills. Um, there's always the potential for that. Uh, I know, it, at least from my standpoint, I try to limit the amount of those requests to something that is a higher priority. You know, the sin with the Civic Center was we just put a brand new floor in that and we just couldn't get the leaks to stop. Um, so that, you know, became ultimately important because we didn't want to damage that brand new beautiful floor. Um, there's always the potential of that. We won't know until whenever the state passes their budget, though. That's the only problem. So you're kind of making it seem like this might not be a uh, uh, high priority at this point maybe we could push it off to next year um i mean if if that's your only request and it's the second year in a row um yeah. i it's would probably it's still a big still a big a big ask oh but this is this that right is it two hundred fifty thousand? i i should have looked at it again did that did that number one thirty one thirty oh so it is all right it's, can't, can't, oh yeah 130 yeah. Look again. oh 130 isn't that I, I still had 250 in my head. Oh, that's that's not bad at all. I mean, it's yeah, not it's, it's not great, but it could be worse. It could be 250. <laughs> yeah. If it, was a, if it was a year ago, it would have been probably 200. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm uh, I'm I'm okay with leaving that in the budget going forward at this time. We'll see where we are at the end. Good. Anyone else have any other issues with leaving it in? Uh, what is what is our uh, our uh, uh, bottom line number what are we trying to achieve we're going for the two hitting the two million we, we had 2.1 last year so i'm sure there's flexibility there so and what, what do we have 2.2 this year Let, let's frank let's see where we go and see what the number is i i think we should go for 2.2 frank we, we can we give ourselves a five percent raise and every we year could, we could do everything we do and we're at 2.15 and we don't even have to you know exactly and what well, how right. many, was it almost seven million in requests? A little yeah. away, right? Oh, uh, the, six and a half, I think, was original. Six, yeah, but that's, that's six, with all the tiers, right? That's every that is that everything? Fire yeah. Hmm. yeah Frank, you said you were gonna take out the tier three request. Did you do that? Uh do we no, we're we're gonna hang on and let listen listen to the school department. If there's yeah, after next week we can do a lot of that after the school yeah. presentation <clears throat> next week joe what we have the school and um some of your town correct yeah so when the school department comes on the 14th uh i've asked our hvac mechanic to be there too just because we're so heavy with that and then uh chris our building superintendent and myself we'll we'll all kind of piggyback that because there's such an overlap between some of the things we're doing and some of the things they're looking for. So, all right, Do that we, one uh, will be that one will be full, full of plenty to discuss. I'm sure. Yeah. Do we want to uh, go forward now and review other items besides the school and HVAC requests? Maybe we can hammer out some other stuff. Have you taken anything off since our last meeting, or have you found other funding, or is everything still kind of the same? No, we've had a couple of things. Um, change I'll, I'll go through it it's probably like a handful uh phil you might have to let me share yeah hold on yeah perfect Hang on. Hang on, I got too many things open.
All right. Can everybody see the spreadsheet that I have up now? Yes. Yes. Okay. So anything that I highlighted in red has changed since the last time we talked. Um, so I'll just I'll just buzz through it. Um, at least those changes really quick. Um, so this one here, um, this 2007 uh, pickup truck that my group has, um, there's no guarantees from any of the manufacturers right now that in order that we place, um, A, they're going to be able to come through with or B, what the timeline uh, might actually be. Uh, so I removed this. We could probably get another year out of this vehicle. Uh, and to be honest with you, it's, it will become a must-have eventually. Uh, it's not quite there yet. For, so for the sake of this year, I took it out of there. Hopefully that, you know, the fleet situation will, will start to improve. Um, with the rest of the bigger items uh, last time, I don't know why I didn't do this, but I showed them uh, if we were to exercise the lease purchase option. So with this sidewalk tractor, um, I did that too, just to see, you know, what the, the price in total is or what it would look like if we leased it uh, just for conversations. I removed uh, after the last time we talked uh, because of the Warren article, obviously um, the fire truck. Um, depending on how the conversation goes, um, this senior center van might be another tough one to acquire um, both the cab and chassis and the upfit to actually get this. Um, I know we're having a heck of a time with Ford trying to get them to commit to anything. So we're reaching out to a couple other manufacturers. So next week, I hope to have something a little bit more definitive for you there. Here uh, at North Ave, so this automatic transfer switch, uh, Michael, our electrician, uh, went oh. back down into this. Um, and he could salvage a lot of what's there. This $10,000 oh. is just what he needs to have uh, that function automatically. So basically what happens is for our generators to turn on there, somebody has to go to the panel and manually flip a switch. Uh, so this would essentially automate that. So A, we don't have an employee doing it. And then B, um, you know, it, it limits the employee that thinks they know that they're doing it correctly uh, that may not. That's a bonus, boy. Yeah, big time. Uh, do, you the not, wood... do, you not, do you not have an ATS now, or is that replace, it's replacing an, an old one, did you say? No, so we, we have generation there, but we have to manually fire it. Uh, oh, so if do. we, if we okay. lose it in the middle of the night, right. I would need to get a phone call or someone on staff would need to get a, a call to go down there and do it. <clears throat> so occasionally it's happened a few times in, in snowstorms and stuff like that. We'd lose like comms and stuff in the middle yeah. of the night, and then someone would have to fire that back up. Basically, this would just function uh, essentially like town hall. So if it senses that the, the power is gone, it's going to kick it on and, oh, yeah. and keep this us in like, business. Yeah, you need this if you're going to have generation for facility. 100%. Um, the other one, so uh, on the uglier side, uh, the Woodville <laughs> School. So this this chiller replacement, we got a hard number um, from Dakin and $230,000 is going to be what that project's going to need uh, to get that done. You'll hear when my group comes in um, out of any of the, the rooftops or any of the work we're doing on any of the roofs related to HV and air moving, um, they're going to tell you that this is their top priority. If, you know, this is, for lack of a better term, band-aided and bubblegummed now, uh, it's running. It's original um, to the school being built. Uh, Michael, who you hear from, installed it when they built the building. Um, so he's intimately aware of, of what it is in the life. Um, this is going to be the price to replace that. If this goes down, uh, we'll lose cooling for uh, much, if not all, of the building there. Uh, another one that wasn't uh, too awesome, but is finally starting to get dialed in. So the split systems for the Greenwood School, um, it's you're going to look at about $240,000 to do the project. Uh, that's going to include the electrical service upgrade, and it's going to do 20 classrooms. Uh, it would be a combination of rooftop, and then there'll have to be a few units mounted uh, outside of the building. But you, you're looking at, you know, 240 to do uh, that cooling project for this. It, now, now, we, you this said is, there's an electrical, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, Phil. I was going to ask, I, I would love to see the plan for this. I, I just don't see how 
are you adding a transformer to the site? How are you generating enough power to that old building to run these? You're going to have to. So we had, um, so four vendors have come out and looked at it. Uh, one of them, um, Dakin, who does a lot of the big stuff, a lot of the crane work, like when um, COVID was going on for some of the things in the high school and things like that, they really came in uh, and did a lot of work for us. Uh, they don't want to touch it. They don't want anything to do with it. Why? Um, <laughs> I think I wouldn't either. Just because it's a, it's an old building, and you know, um, I think one of their big things was coring through the walls and and some of the other things. It was a lot more work, um, you know, than their. Well, this raises a, raises the question I raised last time: is what what is the long term plan for that school? The answer is the same. I don't think there is a plan. Wasn't that responded to at the last meeting, Frank? Like I heard the last meeting, someone responded to you that there is no current plan for the school. So. Like we've been looking at high school requests, just so you know, like since I've been on the board on this commission, we've been looking at requests for the high school knowing, and that was a plan that we knew that was coming and we still had to approve requests for that. So I, I, my, my, what I would say is that you have to look at these, if there's an absolute need to keep the building running, then whether or not it's being replaced, you have to maintain it, right? Like this seems a little bit more of an extra thing, but particularly I'm not a big fan of this project for a couple of reasons, but, uh, um, you know, there is no plan. I live in Greenwood and I can tell you, you know, there's no plan that anyone knows of. Uh, and I'm on permanent building committee where we would see this plan and feasibility. There's been no discussion in my years that this this project's coming up. The high school has been the number one priority. And I believe the DPW building is something that's it's lurking in the shadows. That's that, that's going to be coming up sooner or later, too. Uh, but the Greenwood is one of those eternal conversations in this town because it's the oldest school. It's older than the high school. It's been through two pan. It's the only school that's been through two pandemics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Phil, so, uh, you you have other problems with this project. What what? Is I I manage. So I I'm a pro I own a management company, so I manage a lot of these older mass masonry brick buildings in Cambridge. Very similar construction to the school, yeah. and they have no central AC. So I've had groups of owners that have uh, tried to plan such a project at a building like a 27 unit mass masonry and for all the immediate reasons joe just said no one wants to have to core through three widths of brick uh getting the wiring through old horsehair plaster and you know these buildings aren't made for these systems and so you have to do everything it looks ugly you have equipment all over the roof so you have roof considerations it's a nightmare we asked last year for a feasibility of this we didn't approve this last year i believe checking my notes because we didn't have, there wasn't really a plan or even that this could be done with the power in the school. And I'm still uncertain on those two things. I don't see a plan besides what Joe's verbally saying. I'd love to would see a plan and the confirmation that the infrastructure can handle this, not only the roof, but the electrical infrastructure can actually handle this project before we would approve this. What are they doing for AC now? Is it room by room? If fans. Mm -hmm. They have one system in the principal's office. They put a they put a heat pump in the principal's office. I think we approved that a couple yeah. of years ago. Okay, so well, that build that building is used during the summer. No, but it gets oh. hot in September and spring. It, it gets pretty steamy in that school. Okay, well, we got to think hard. Think hard about this. I still don't know why there can't it can, it cannot be the. Um, the the movable ones. What, what am I? I can't come up with the, the portable. Word. The portable. Thank you. The portable ones for it. Wouldn't that be twenty of those? Would be a lot cheaper than this. The roll around from room to mm -hmm. room. Well, they wouldn't go room to room because it would be the vent would be out right out one of the windows. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Drain it out a window or something. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a real consideration. And I mean, they're concerned about the gym. I mean, the, the Galvin gym isn't doesn't have AC in it either, does it? Well, the, well, yeah, um, the Galvin doesn't. No, I remember sweating like crazy at graduation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the gym in the Greenwood's not as big, but it's still a huge volume. Like, I can't imagine what you would need to try to cool down with the big window, the big picture window in the front. Like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, the portable. I don't know. I personally, I'm a, I'm on the fence. Not that I don't think the kids and the teachers deserve a, a, a air conditioned environment to teach in. Like 100, percent they do. I just 
feel like it's a my personal experience looking at very similar projects with similar structures is there's so many roadblocks my guess is this 240 is probably a fraction of the realistic cost to do it right yeah. who's presenting on this school this, department this was a request from the school department and, then, and when are they yeah. coming in? next week right they come, they're coming in next week we can we can take the 14th next week we got tim coming in yeah, I, I know he'll he'll be here. I don't know who may or may not be coming with him. Uh, but Joe, that number came from you, the 240. Yes. Yep. Okay. As a direct result of our feasibility study that we funded or no? This was a direct result of the one of the companies that is doing some of the control work uh, and other things that we have going on in town came out and took a look at this because they were in town. Um, this is actually the, the first quote we got was for 220. Um, then we got this quote at 240. We got one that denied us, uh, and I'm waiting on one more. Um, this would, according to the, the document that we received today, would include the upgrade for the electrical service to do this. I, okay, I don't... so you had one, one vendor who denied, who didn't want to tackle it. What confidence yep. do the other vendors have in doing this kind of work on an old building? Some of the, uh, to address some of the concerns that Phil brought up, it could be, it could be anything. They they might just need the work. Um, it, it could be a thousand different things. I think for the one that didn't want anything to do with it, um, they're so busy on a mass scale that, you know, for them they they could probably do three or four other projects. Um, you know, that are much higher dollar value, they're, you know, less intrusive and easier for them to probably accomplish um, than something like this, which sounds like it's probably more handwork and, you know. But they didn't want to tackle an old building. No, no, the, they weren't interested in the project um, between the roof work and then needing to supplement uh, with line sets and different things coming out of the building. Um, that wasn't something that they thought fit them at the moment. Well, not to push it, but we can get nice Dyson four or $500 portable ones for oh. each classroom and spend 10 grand. That's right. I mean, we're talking, what, three months of the year, maybe? You're talking June and September. Two months. I'm giving you, you May. I'll say I'm May is hot. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I just think that it should just be the portable ones and not destruct. Yeah, there's a reason why that company said no, and it could be because they don't have the experience as well. But no, I think she's right. The thing's too old. I, I think a project like this is beyond our committee for that price. We're, we're no, we we're not here to re reinvent how our building is fooled. We're here to keep it simple. Replace a unit on the roof. Well, uh, we're not replacing a unit on the roof. We're adding. We're adding exactly. on. If we're 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 putting holes in buildings. And exactly, that's why I don't I don't agree with this at all. So, uh, so right, we can talk about it next. We can talk about it next week with Mike from the town as well because he'll uh, he should have a lot more um, input on it. Yep. If it does, unless anyone else wants to um, say something about it. No, I, I, I think I, 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 we went to Greenwood, but did you go over the Dolbear RTUs yet? No, no not, not yet. Okay. Um, the only thing I could, I'll tell you about that. We'll, we'll get into it deep probably um, next week, but one of the reasons why these are up there, there are 22 systems, Phil. So um, should we catch a leak in one? It'll cost us a small fortune to get it back up and refilled. Um, Mike will be able to tell you too that these are, I think, original um, to the school construction there. Yeah, I just, I, I'm curious, similar to the chiller replacement quote at Woodville, my guess is both of these RTUs are coming in a lot more than what, uh, unless these are hard quotes. Um, and it, whether, so do we have hard quotes for those two? The chiller, yes. Um, memory doesn't serve me off the top of my head. If I don't, if I don't have a hard number, I will have a hard number before a decision is made. 
Yeah, I think it would be important. And will these include new like dunnage steel and or curbs and all the uh, other stuff associated with uh, replacing older units with newer units? Uh, there's there's uh, yeah, uh, what any yeah. any ancillary that we need to make it fit um, would have to be included. So when we're doing some of the some of the COVID related stuff, uh, we made sure that we did that. All of it, it, it was included um, as holistic as it needed to be to make it right. Yeah. What has the town considered all these HVAC products, uh, uh, projects as a uh, as a package to, to for an ARPA funding, COVID relief funding, uh, since it has to do with mechanicals and the environment of learning environments? Isn't that uh, some of the hot button topics of what some of this money was given to towns for? Um, you know, there's so many, <clears throat> so much in this list. Like I know you took off RTU at Woodville, but if you add up just what I can see in the screen. You know that's a considerable amount of money of HVAC in one swoop. Then there's money. I wonder what the consideration has been to try to take care of all these under COVID relief. So when the CARES money was available, uh, anything that we could fit the criteria for an expense that we did, uh, and Tom Walsh was fantastic working with us in MEMA to make sure that any of the requests that we made for that. Um, fit the criteria and we were able to get a ton done um you know especially at the high school which hadn't seen a lot of that you know we've been struggling with that building for quite a while um there was some work done on the dull bear uh, and all throughout if there is anything else uh, i know green communities some of the grant availability touches on this uh, a little bit um i'm not completely versed in exactly what uh, may be eligible uh, it may not be uh, but that's something that you could explore. Or uh, like you said, does it make sense to compile all this into a bigger, you know, Warren article type project and just knock it all off, you know, in, in one swoop? Um, we haven't done any due diligence related to that, but it we certainly could. Um, I don't know. I think at some threshold though, that that might fall in the PBC though, depending on how how big that gets. We're just buildings. We're not. I don't think we're individual projects on existing buildings. I don't think, but maybe it's a look. threshold. Yeah, maybe it's a money. I there's no there's not a lot of money savings. You need you need a crane at the Dolby or a crane at the Woodville. You know, it, 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 every project's its own. Yeah, those two with the those two RTUs at Dolby, they're only RTUs. Did you say? Yes. Those are running the whole school, and they're both showing their age. Yep. Yeah, it'd be great to get hard quotes on those for our next meeting. Yep, you'll get it. Um, well, just while we were talking, I took this water heater out of the Galvin. Uh, this is something that I'm, I know was identified in the energy reduction plan of the green communities um, work that the town did. And I'm 99.9% .9 positive that that is going to get done through the $189,000 that we got. So for now, uh, just take that out. Um, and then the only other thing I modified after we talked to IT uh, I think as Frank was saying, I just zeroed these out to show, you know, what the running total here, 3.8 uh, kind of looks like. Okay. We're getting there. So you've so taken, you you taken 3 million out, really, the, the, uh, the fire truck, the pump, that's a million that's gone. Yes. Yep. Yeah. You, take, it, you, you took it out. So just everything in red you've taken out. Uh, well, everything red I took out since the last time we talked. Uh, but the fire truck was something we had discussed previous to that. Um, some of these other ones, like related to Vinton Street here, um, you know, that's more of a, a nice to have than a must have at the moment. So we took all that out. Did we decide to take the uh, solar panels out from the uh, Civic Center at this point, or were we going to check on something? Uh, I left it in there. So I, I think I said last time the Historical Commission uh, wasn't completely in favor of doing the panels on the asphalt side of the roof. So I requoted it um, and carved it up to just handle the flat rubber roof. I don't, I don't have that number yet uh, because I was meeting with them. Um, but I should have it by the end of the week. So that I left it in there for now, but that's subject to change. I think that that should drop. That's been somewhere. Um, if I was confident in maybe getting an earmark or something like that for anything, uh, it seems that the state really 
likes those solar projects. So um, that'll probably be one that I'll try to submit a letter to to justify getting some funding for that. Now the chiller replacement you're, you're taking out? No, nope, that's still there. It's just red because the, the price changed since the last time we talked. Okay. They got a hard number on that. Okay. That, seem, that seems to be a, a must have. Uh, you'll hear from my group that that if they get anything that's a request in HVAC, that's the one they would like to see happen. And what and with regard to the, the rooftop AC, you have to bear with me. What what is the difference between chiller replacement and rooftop AC? I think the rooftop AC came from uh, the school, so I think what they're talking about that is the air, hair handler and movement. Um, I think I mentioned it last time. We'll have to verify it when we talk next. But this rooftop AC and RTU, I I think we have a, I think we're asking the same question, but I think we're calling it two different things here. So we need to clarify that for the committee. So I I, I hate to sound naive here, but you're telling me that the rooftop and the BTU replacement could be folded into the chiller replacement. No, what it, what I'm saying is uh, rooftop AC and RTU. I think we're talking about the same apparatus. Uh huh. Okay. I just think that it's being called two totally different things. Okay. So for all these AC uh, projects, I mean, is is this materials and installation, or does your group install some of this, Joe? For something this big, um, probably not. This would be materials installation, and these would most of them would involve crane work. So, uh, which believe it or not is the cheaper part of the project. But um, if it's something like hot water heaters, uh, things like that, pumps, drives, um, my group would, would handle that just to save the, the labor end of it. But this would literally be taking the unit off the roof, craning it down to the parking lot and bringing a brand new one up. All right, I'll, I'll change. Is my is my microphone on? I'll change topics yep. a little bit. Let's um. I'll tackle the senior center van. The the one they have is working fine, and this is kind of just a little extra for them. I'm, I know Joe, you were going to check into pricing, but I don't see why it's something that we need to keep on this on the plan this year. It's not you know it's, it's not a replacement for a broken one. It's a it's an additional. But that's just that's my opinion. Anybody have any feelings about that? Oh, that yeah. sounds right. <clears throat> Agree. The world one, the World War One monument, Joe. That's that seems like it would be so. There'd be a grant somewhere, and I, but I know this town has really been trying to get that project underway for quite some time with fundraising I know and it's an important monument so you blanked it out is the, are you thinking because there's a granite or did you guys talk at the last meeting that maybe it wasn't going to fit into this year's capital no I think there's a grant right there is so there's a matching awesome. grant um, through historic preservation that we're applying for um, it's due I think the 17th um, we're almost finished with that application I have the pre call it feasibility study, but the needs assessment uh, that was done on that. So I have a scope. Um, we got some help with selecting the criteria that would make a vendor, um, you know, responsive or considered responsive to it. Um, so we'll turn that around to RFP. That will uh, be a conversation that the council will be taking up. Depending on how much we get for the grant, we just need to match it. I'm hoping it's half and half. Uh, and it sounds like um, without getting too far ahead, it sounds like there's an appetite to do that. And um, there may be uh, ARPA funding, or it seems like that uh, maybe Seth Moulton's office um, has some interest uh, in seeing this. Great. So that being the more expensive of the two, uh, we're also looking to redo um, the bandstands too. So 
will apply for the grant, you know, for the, the heavier one that's been kind of kicked down the road for a while and see where that takes us. But it's on all our logos. We got to fix it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. The more last time more, more expensive to order new letterhead than it is just to uh, fix the bandstand. Yeah. You're telling me. But what about the, do you guys, I see the playgrounds or the dough bears are still in. So that's a lot like, Look in the last couple of years, we've approved like 160 last year. And I think so this would be a huge playground, 320, but it would take care of two probably really desperate ones, right? <clears throat> so when we, we'll talk about this um, next week. It, it's probably most appropriate to bring the schools into that. But just to touch on the That's playground true. topic. Yep. So we did get a grant for the Doyle. So we have a $150,000 grant. So that one uh, was removed because we're going to be able to do that. Um, with the Dole Bear School, um, the, the bigger one, the $220,000 one, is the playground that you can see from Vernon Street. That's the one by the soccer field. Um, I, there's an appetite on the school ends to to make some of their structures, um, as time goes on, you know, the most ADA compliant that they could be. Um, the one thing lurking with this project is uh, if they're to redo it and rubberize that uh, and change that playground, I would probably have to do a sidewalk project um, to be able to get someone from the parking lot to that uh, and meet that ADA. So that's something we have to talk about. Um, the smaller number uh, out back, if anybody's, I'm sure you've all been back there, the smaller um, tot lot, um, that is probably outside of the Walton School, uh, that's probably the oldest playground that we have. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say, you know, we've Basically, we're getting those approved based on, you know, kind of need and age. Uh, so this one is most the most likely one to go. I know uh, Dennis Fazio from my group is talking to them. If you remember, um, we also were able to get some grant funding for an ADA compliant swing, which would accommodate a wheelchair. Um, so you know, someone with mobility issues can get a wheelchair onto that and do this. We've approached the school department about maybe putting that here. Uh, and dovetailing it into this project and having, you know, kind of like a a more expansive ADA compliant um, playground back there. But when when we talk next week, uh, we can go through that. Is there, there any practicing? general plan for the lake playground to rubberize the lake? The um, I, we we could. Uh, the only thing I would. I would defer to Dennis on that. I don't know with you know some of the the weather off the lake how that rubber holds up, you know, getting misted all the time and, and things like that. Uh, Were you worried about the marine, like the water environment? Yeah, I, 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 I think you guys should look at it for sure. It can. I, I've seen similar on uh, in ocean, like beachfront playgrounds. They have the rubber, so I'm pretty sure they make some that, and that would be a playground in town that would benefit you know, from that swing, but like, just it's such a central point for playgrounds, but these schools are desperate too. It's funny, the oldest one, they're considering a tier three, right? Like you said that that smaller one is the oldest, but they're considering it a third priority. So, okay. We'll see what so the parentheses like. be moved there? Cause so the, the field playground is the 220. And the, the 100 is the kindergarten playground? Right. I should just delete that because it doesn't yeah. make sense. Before we talk next time, I'll, um, we'll have that completely clarified for you, though. Sorry about okay. that. Um, are there any other options for the historic floral way fencing? Uh, that was that was just a request that came. Uh, I think I mentioned it last time. We were doing the floral way work. If you're walking in a clockwise direction so heading down towards the pickleball on the right hand side um, some of those granite bollards uh, I guess I never remember it used to have um, white cedar fence uh, in between it uh, we were doing that work the historical commission asked us if we would bring that up in this process um, as far as options Maybe a preservation grant. I think the the monument is probably your best bet for success there. Um, well, maybe in a future year for the for the fencing. Maintaining that fence once it's put up, the town now has to maintain a wood 
a wood fence and then and, and, and because it's original that's why they're looking for the wood correct and not like a pvc replica my preference would be a pvc replica but it I is know, not but on the historic yeah. side it's not right it yep. goes against the grain yeah literally literally like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pun intended pun intended or whatever it is hey, you just did the pathway there didn't you yep okay On the enterprises, we don't have to worry. About, I mean, that's self-funded, pretty much. I mean, yep. The these are uh, so this would come out of you. You probably hear me talk about uh, retained earnings, mm -hmm. which is essentially it's the same thing as free cash. It's what you have in reserve. Um, so both of these would be funded um, sewer out of sewer, water out of water. And okay, so the. The difference between the eight hundred thousand and the four four hundred thousand is that you, there's a lease involved there, right? Correct. Yep. Just to spread that out a little bit, uh, that vac truck would actually it's going to replace two vehicles. So we have a um, wheeled excavator, and right now we have a it essentially functions the same as a fire truck, right? It's a big pump with water in it. We use it to clear lines in the street. Um, that's getting old, that gets used every day. So the hour meter on that thing is sky high just because of what it does. We're gonna replace both of those units um, with something that will not only clear the lines out, but will also evac uh, anything out that we might have. The reason why we're looking to do that, um, if a water breaks or something like that, we don't have to send a person into the hole. We can use that to limit their time down there. Um, suck out manholes, you, you name it. Um, it's kind of the way the industry is starting to trend to vacuum excavate instead of using, you know, people force. So we're going to strike while we, we have the opportunity with the two other aging pieces that we're going to re hopefully retire. It's the turnaround on one of those. I can't imagine how long it'll take you. To... They claim uh, within the year. So oh, really not a lot of people buying vac trucks. What happened to the muffin monster? Wasn't that on this list at one point? It was, it was wrong. Um, I had to, the muffin monster from a previous year. So in oh, okay, that, good. in that pumping yeah. station, there's three main pumps. Um, they run 24 seven, never shut off. They take everything that goes down the drain in every drain in town and push it towards deer Island. So that money would be uh, one of the, we want to replace one of those pumps this year and then replace the other two in subsequent years. So that would be to, to start that process. And that lease and soar enterprise doesn't affect the overall lease schedule, right? Or does it? Uh, no. So that would only affect um, the enterprise. So for the next subsequent year in capital, I'd have, you know, a, a payment. I, next year, I know that I have to spend at least that payment um, in the enterprise, but it, it wouldn't affect like the fleet section in the beginning of this. It's separate from that. And none of those fleet vehicles are used for sore or water reasons? In the top, no. Yeah, that from the top. Okay. So what are we down to? Three, where where is the line? Where, where, where where's the trail to Deer Island go from from Farm Street? It goes up Farm Street to Old Nahant Road. Mm -hmm. uh, it heads towards the dock side. Uh, and then picks up Melrose, and I think from there it head, it kind of follows 93 in Medford. I'm not 100% sure once it gets oh, it out of town. That way, huh? Yeah, it's sort of a roundabout way. Yeah, doesn't go through Saugus. Doesn't go through <clears throat> Saugus. No. Wow. <clears throat> That's interesting. I think because the infrastructure down at Greenwood and Melrose is is there. Um, I would imagine when they were doing it to blast through the hill, heading up into Saugus was probably cost prohibitive. Yeah, but yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, they put all those sewers in a hundred years ago when the MDC was doing it. So I, I can't exactly reach out to someone to find out what their thought process was, unfortunately. Yeah. Good <laughs> trivia question though. Yeah. <laughs> 
Are, are we done digging? I, I, um, I, I know this is slightly off topic, but are, are they, is New Salem and Salem ever going to get repaved? This construction season. Yep. Okay. They have to go from um, the intersection of New Salem and Salem down Salem Street to uh, right about Toby Lane or where the rail to trail pops out there. Uh, we're going to replace the water main, but that whole thing's scheduled to get paved. Good to know. Good news. That's good news. <laughs> yeah, that is you're, good news. You're telling me. Yeah, that <laughs> that, that, that section, the uh, section of Lowell Street, Montrose Ave. It's a bumpy so ride. Yeah. It'll be... It'll be busy down there this year, but it'll all be worth it. Yeah. Um, so when, when we are meeting twice next week. Uh, yeah, I was going to get into that. We're all done talking about everything. Um, next Tuesday, we obviously have the school and uh, and Joe's guys. And then Wednesday, uh, the 15th, yeah, the 14th and the 15th. I figure hopefully we can wrap a lot of this up and, and get it down. What we're what, what was that list down already to 3.7 or 3.8? Um, so if we knock another million and a half off of that, we're looking good. And we should, you know, maybe after talking to the schools, we'll get a good chunk of that off, uh, make a decision on which ones we should fund. Is, uh, like, like last year, is the town manager and FinCom going to join us? Yeah, af probably okay. after that. Uh, next week, uh, we'll decide on. The week of the 20th, I'm looking at my calendar. I, I'd assume the week of the 20th, we'd have that meeting. I could get everyone involved. Um, and then, you know, we, we could figure right now, just for planning sakes, like maybe we could figure the 21st. But we, we can we can wait till next week. Okay. And then when, Dave, when Dave's back on, make sure he's available. I want to make sure, I want to try to make sure as best we can that everybody's involved. Um, so what my yeah after next Tuesday and Wednesday I would foresee one meeting with the uh, FinCom reps and the town you know getting Stephen on it if he wants to join us and then after that we would we could either vote at the end of that meeting or we could have one more meeting just to vote. So I foresee three three real meetings left. Good and, and I'm 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 out the twentieth to the twenty fourth so I I oh, can't make that's that what it was. That's, yeah. yeah. Um, you know what? After the fifteenth, I think we're going to be pretty much there. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, that's what I. That's what I think. So that meeting, that following week meeting, might just be, you know, to present it to the FinCom, and and have Steve's input on everything. But Are then you... we'll do our final vote. Maybe we'll wait till our final vote for the last week in March. Then, if we don't do it. Next week, uh, yeah, we don't. Yeah, do uh, I'm away the last half the last week of March, the 26th through the 29th. All right. <laughs> so, uh, Frank, do you want me to clue the? I, I think the liaison still might be Joe Bertrand. You? I talked to. Joe I've been today. in. I've been Did in you? communication with him. Yeah, oh, okay. I was. Uh, I was in a PBC with Joe today. He was asking how we were doing. I told him, yeah. Frank. I told him this was our second meeting that you'd probably be in touch when we were ready for yeah. him. Yeah, I, I sent him an email a couple of weeks ago, letting him know, and he just said, let him know as well when yeah. we're going to be ready for him. Um, yeah, he said he's very flexible, so we should be good. I was and just going to say, I, I go ahead. I was just going to say, I could, I would clue him in asking if he wanted to attend early, but you got that covered, so I'll leave that be. Yeah, I'll, I'll copy him next week on the email of our meeting. Uh, he might be copied on the emails too. I, I'm not sure if I, I copy him every week, but I'll make sure he's on it next for our next meeting. And then we'll play it by ear with everybody being out. Like I said, hopefully after the next week's two meetings, we're going to be right there. And then yeah. if, um, you know, we'll present to FinCom and if Steve wants to join us, he can. And we'll see if we have to ask for 2.4 or if we're going to be sitting at 2.1. We'll see where we are. Good. Um, just one more order of business is uh, approving the meeting minutes from last week, the 28th. Did everybody get a chance to review them when I sent them out today? Mm -hmm. Yes. I move we approve them. A second. All righty. And that's it. Anybody else 
next week will be a big will be big with the IT. I mean, not with I'm sorry with the schools and Joe's guys. I think we're going to get a lot accomplished next Tuesday. Well, one of the, one of the things I'll have to um, it's part I have to identify uh, by the end of next week and submit an application for the Green Communities Grant. Um, so anything that goes into that, which would alter this list, probably by the end of the week, uh, I'll send out another revision of this. There's some things that change. They'll be they'll be building related, but um, I'm anticipating, you know, maybe two or three things that might actually drop out of this. So cross your fingers. I yeah. guess anything HVAC related is going to be considered more efficient than right? is that is that one of the factors they look for in these applications is that you're improving the efficiencies. Yeah, one of the, so I know like one of the things that was identified in year one was um, DFDs um, at the Dole Bear, but all of that LED lighting upgrades, um, you name it. So the town got one hundred eighty nine thousand dollars. So now we're kind of going through everything we identified and seeing how many pieces we can fit into that puzzle to maximize the impact of it. Um, but there'll there'll have to be a, a town side debate on you know do you do you spend it all on one HVAC unit or do you do a complete LED upgrade and all the lights to five buildings? You know it's still up in the air, but I should I should start to really have that dialed in by the end of the week. And if anything changes, I'll update that and send it back out through Frank. Yeah, but if you send it out to me by Monday or even Tuesday morning, then I can get it out to everyone before we meet next Tuesday. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have good day. Thanks. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Have a great good night. night. See you next week. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Motion to adjourn at 8:28. So moved. Or I make a motion to adjourn. Oh yes. Or whatever. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Good night. Bye. Thanks.